A steamy late summer night in the deep south, two teenaged lovers sneak out of their bedrooms to meet for a secret rendezvous, but their moments of fleeting passion would be their last. By morning, a gruesome discovery. The couple's bodies are found in lurid poses behind a grocery store. Nothing good happens at 3 a.m., which is the, the, the approximate time we believe that they were, they were murdered. Each killed by a single gunshot to the head. She was a good girl. She would have not been messing around with anything bad. Natalie Henderson, a sweet Southern belle, just 17 years old and bursting with school spirit. Whenever she would walk into a room, she would brighten up everyone's day, really. Carter Davis, a strapping athlete, a star of the lacrosse team. Although his life was cut short, he lived life to the fullest. Who executed the young lovers? Was it a random act of violence or something more intimate? A double homicide in, in Roswell is a significant event. The two All-American teens were about to start their senior year of high school in Roswell, Georgia, considered one of the safest cities in the Peach State until now. The teen's families and cops are desperate to find out if the lovers knew their killer. I know that's the big interest right now is, is how did they, they know each other? Did they know each other? But police soon traced a Honda passport seen around the area at the time of the murders to this man, Jeffrey Hazelwood. They're on top of it and they're being aggressive to find out what happened to these kids. Police Chief Rusty Grant says the 20-year-old Hazelwood was seen using Natalie's stolen credit card after she was killed. And they also trace his cell phone activity, which offers up even more incriminating evidence. The basic geographic area of, of the crime scene where the bodies were located, as well as the crime scene where he utilized a, a, a debit card of, of Natalie. Police also scoured Hazelwood's digital footprint, which revealed disturbing postings on his Instagram account, like, why the blank should I live? All I do is hurt everybody, even the one I love more than my own life. There's no one left. Shockingly, Hazelwood posted this photo of his girlfriend visiting him at work, just after Natalie and Carter were killed. Once he was uh, identified as a, a suspect, we placed him under surveillance. And strangely, police couldn't find any direct personal connection between Natalie, Carter, and Hazelwood. But within 48 hours of the murders, they have enough to arrest Hazelwood at a gas station. You have the right to remain silent. Where the alleged shooter had been seen on video, shirtless, wearing a V for Vendetta mask and speaking in a British accent. How do you plead to these charges? Not guilty. During a preliminary hearing, Hazelwood, who avoided eye contact with the victim's families, was strangely shaking uncontrollably, even twitching his head while wearing a wedding band, despite the fact that he's not married. He's scared to death. He doesn't know what's going to happen. This is Jeffrey's friend who wants to remain anonymous. I mean, this kid, he ain't in his right mind. He says Hazelwood's demeanor in court may have looked like an act but was not surprising. He claims the accused murder was a ticking time bomb. One day, whether he was 50 years old or whether he was 20, the wheels were gonna fall off the truck and he was gonna either end up in the state pen, you know, or he was gonna end up six feet under the ground. Detectives reveal chilling details about what happened that night. Hazelwood confessing to spotting the young couple in the car, then following them around to the back of the grocery store. He says he hides out and watches the couple for several minutes. He even climbs on the roof of the store and looks down on them. Hazelwood's next move would prove to be fatal. He approaches the couple at gunpoint, demands they get out of the car. Hazelwood is afraid of Carter. He shoots him in the head. Natalie would be next. At this point, he said that he shot her, and, and she fell next to the car. And where did he shoot her? In the head. An emotional detective says before he killed the young beauty, Hazelwood forced her out and made her lean over the car, first spanking her and then sexually assaulting her. At the scene, detectives discovered Hazelwood had repositioned the victim's bodies. Natalie found nude in a suggestive pose with a feather in her hair, Carter wearing only shorts, his arms stretched out in the shape of a cross. It's a sad story. Two people are, two young people are dead, 
and a young man is charged. So we'll know more as this goes on. Police say Hazelwood did not know the victims and they can find no motive for the callous murders of the lovers. We believe that Hazelwood acted alone. Hazelwood was indicted on 15 counts, including murder, aggravated assault, and sexual battery. The defense and prosecution put Hazelwood's psychologist on the stand, questioning him about his patient's mental fitness. He was hearing voices, uh, some were friends, and, but sometimes he was hearing uh, thoughts of demons. The defense expected to claim Hazelwood, now with his long hair cut short, was incompetent to stand trial. Even had a belief that sometimes that God would send him messages um, through the television, um, and that, you know, he felt like sometimes that people were watching him through the walls. But now there will be no need for a trial at all. In a stunning reversal of his original not guilty plea, Hazelwood, flanked by his lawyers, made a startling statement in court. With regard to counts three, four, six, and seven, how do you plead? Guilty, but mentally ill. Guilty to all the charges, including two counts of malice murder, with each count claiming mental illness. Has anyone promised you anything in order to get you to plead guilty today? For Natalie and Carter's families, some justice. For Hazelwood's deranged, senseless murders, he receives a sentence of life in prison.